I'm not a terrorist, even if we look different. A man with ties to a white supremacist group walked into a house of worship. I knew that both of my parents were inside the temple. Mardeep Kaleka got a frantic call from inside the temple. My mom's hiding in the closet right now. She's hyper scared and my dad's shot on the ground. One of the deadliest hate crimes in U.S. history. That is the rise of the white supremacy movement. The person that I thought to reach out to was a person that has lived that lifestyle and has started that same organization. You were a founding member of one of the largest hate groups in the country. We must secure the existence of our race and the future of white children. We were face to face. What am I really going to ask him? Party finally tried to discourage him. Don't do this. You lost your mind. That is delusional. He should get help. But he needed to face it. I would go meet a white supremacist. Do you mind sharing your experience on that day? What was going through your mind? As we were on the freeway and we got closer to the temple, I started to notice squad cars driving by us at a high rate of speed. As we got there, there was a squad car that came right in front of us. I asked the police officer, I said, you know, I need to go through, I need to get to the temple. And he told me that you can't go through, son. Across the street, there was this little girl. And she had this 100 mile stare. Like she had seen something that she wasn't supposed to see. So I walked up to her and I asked her, what happened, what did you see? She tells me that as the shooting started, her, her brother, and her mother grabbed the key from their dad ran off in the basement and waited till the shooting stopped. Her and her brother were the two first people to come out. She says that as she walked upstairs, she saw people laying in their own pools of blood. I asked her, did you see my dad? I saw your dad. He was laying in that same room, laying on the floor. He was saying this word over and over and over again. This word, Vahegru, Vahegru. Taking from darkness to light. And at that point, I knew that my dad didn't make it. I got in my car and drove home, and I remember rolling up all the windows and, and really just screaming at the top of my lungs. All these different emotions start to come over you. Frustration, helplessness. First thing you think about when you go to sleep or when you wake up in the morning is what just happened? Did I just dream this? Did this really just happen? Reality was really starting to set in. Dad's not coming home. And these children are never gonna see their grandfather again. August 5th, 2012, when a white supremacist gunman walked into the sick temple of Wisconsin. And as these responding officers are coming to the scene, they engaged in a firefight with Wade Page. And Wade Page takes his own life. Why people do things like this? Why do people do things like this? The shooter was dead, so I couldn't ask the shooter. So the person that I thought to reach out to was a person that has lived that lifestyle and has started that same organization to find out why somebody would do something like this. There was family members who were concerned, and they thought that something really was going on with me as far as like PTSD or something that had set in, where I was kind of delusional that I would go meet a white supremacist. You, you lost your mind. You, something's going on with you. Don't do this. Maybe they might be right. Maybe something is going on with me. What am I gonna say to this person? What do I really wanna know? All this other stuff is going on, but now we were face to face. And what am I really going to ask him? The first time that I saw him, to my surprise, he was kind of thinking the same way. I was involved in white supremacist hate groups for seven years. I hated anyone who wasn't a violent white racist. I attacked people with my bare hands because of the color of their skin. And I incited other angry white kids to do worse. Then I became a single parent. And my love for my daughter led me from hate groups. I'll never forget Sunday, August 5th, 2012. I remember a Twitter feed, just the hashtag saying temple shooting, and it's just pouring down my screen. I just had this sinking feeling that, that I had something to do with this, that, that my old ideology had something to do with this. That I was freaked out going to meet him. I'm intimidated. 
At the time, I was just like, I, I didn't know what to say. Where do I even begin? He was kind of like, what do I say to this person who just lost their father? I'm, I'm you know, I'm sorry. I'm sorry it would seem kind of hollow at, at this point. I helped to start this organization that this guy belonged to, and now I'm sitting here, and I'm, I'm facing the consequences of actions that I thought that I put way back there. My dad was temple president. He was president for 15 years. I mean, his, his dream was basically to make a sanctuary where people could come to. Within that time, he did. And then I started to think to myself, he died in the place that he helped build, and he was calling out to God for himself. Vahegu, Vahegu, Vahegu. Taking from darkness to light. And then a light came on, and I said, you know what? These prayers were not for self. These prayers were for you. For us, the ones that were left. He was murmuring this word, Vahegu, Vahegu, taking from darkness to light. We find ourselves at this, at this restaurant together. Just being able to talk to him was uplifting. As we talked, we saw we had so much more in common than different. And I saw him going through a lot of the same motions that I saw you going through. Genuine empathy is the connection. We have to feel each other once again. It would hit us at that point, like, we need to work together. We got to do something together to basically get this message out to the world. And the more people we can help understand this, the better off we're all going to be. Serve to Unite was born. How do we learn about people and how do we embrace the differences that we all have? Both men are now part of a group committed to compassion and diversity. You guys are a very unlikely pair. Yeah, an odd couple at first. It's yeah. a bromance for the ages, actually. <laughs> <laughs> We're genuinely friends. We're genuinely brothers. This man comes over to my house, babysits the kids. Everything that Partyp and I do is really to get human beings to see each other as fellow human beings and see what we have in common and really address the root causes behind hate and violence. Once you see somebody's humanity, it's going to be tough to be violent with that person. Take this inspiration with you back to the communities you belong to. Sow seeds of love in everyone that you see whether they show it back to you or not. Be courageous. Be courageous. She'd say, I'm gonna die young. She'd just say it just like that. She was very vocal about her premonition. When the shooters approached the school, these were the stairs that they walked up. And when they got to the top of the stairs, that's when they saw Rachel. Through her writings, there's just an element of premonition and our prophetic. This was more than about me losing a daughter. Heard on the radio that something was going on at Columbine High School. During my lunch period, I went to the 